Finally, common sense prevails. In San Francisco, Archbishop Cordelione issued a statement on Friday, that's late last night, that was at least four decades late. He has banned Queen Nancy from receiving the Eucharist until she publicly repents of her defense and work for Moloch. Why he waited until now is anyone's guess, but it is a welcome move nonetheless, one that should be taken by his predecessors. And here's the thing, there are the implications for this, things that we really need to look at. And so we're going to dive into a National Catholic Register article on this because they try to play not really both sides of the issue, but they definitely take a nuanced position on it. So let's get into the story. It's an important one. And so thank you for tuning in on a bonus Saturday video. So yeah, big news broke last night on Friday, right? Causing this Saturday bonus video to be made for you in the early hours of Saturday morning. Archbishop Cordelione releasing his letter on a Friday is an odd move to be sure, since that is when news items appear that are typically not meant to really gain traction with the public. It's the day secular figures release news that they don't want making waves since they know most people really just aren't paying attention. And that's, I'm not saying that's what the Archbishop is doing here, certainly not. I just wish he released this on Thursday, but it made huge news. So let's get into the takeaways from the National Catholic Register. Quote, Archbishop Salvatore Cordeleone of San Francisco has formally barred Queen Nancy from receiving Holy Communion, quote, until such time as you publicly repudiate your advocacy for the legitimacy of the Moloch ritual and confess and receive absolution of this grave sin in the sacrament of penance. His decision was communicated not only via a direct letter to Queen Nancy, who resides in the archdiocese, but also in separate correspondence to the priests and laity of San Francisco. Here are some significant takeaways from the decision and the reasons behind it, end quote. And I'm going to interject briefly here and give you this reminder. This should have been dealt with years ago decades ago. This action was common sense, but there is a process and you're about to get insight into that process. Why is there a process? Because the church is so wrapped up in worldly thinking that even bizarre things like administrative process and justice have been adopted by the church, even by the better bishops like the good Archbishop of San Francisco. To put more plainly, to address evil, we now need, of course, to follow a basic process, which is so weird because in times past, this kind of thing would have been taken care of without having to jump through a bunch of hoops. But here's the first takeaway, quote, In a letter to Queen Nancy, but also in his correspondence to the priests and lay faithful of the archdiocese, Archbishop Cordeleone goes to great lengths to lay out the pastoral approach he has taken, which ultimately resulted in the measure taken today. He notes that although he has received many years Many letters over the years calling for some form of public reproachment of Moloch supporting Catholic politicians like Queen Nancy he has consistently held that conversion is always better than exclusion. And before any such action can be taken, it must be preceded by sincere and diligent efforts at dialogue and persuasion. Regarding the Queen, those efforts have cl clearly been made. The two have spoken about the dissonance between her public support for the Moloch ritual and her Catholic faith previously something Archbishop Cordeleone acknowledges and expresses his gratitude for in his letter to the speaker. But since September 2021, when she announced that she would push forward a bill to enshrine extreme Malachian rituals into federal law, the Archbishop notes that he has attempted to speak with the Archdiocesan resident about her public advocacy for Moloch ritual access on five separate occasions, most recently on May 4th. In each instance, he has received no reply. As a result, Archbishop Cordeleone has concluded that there's nothing more that can be done at this point to help her understand the seriousness of the evil of her advocacy for Moloch is perpetrating and the scandal she is causing. The Archbishop notes that he finds no pleasure whatsoever in fulfilling my pastoral duty here, adding that he has been guided by the three pastoral motives pointed to in Pope Francis's recent revisions of canon law, responding to the demands of justice, moving the offending party to conversion, and repairing the scandal caused. End quote. I think most people <laughs> were aware that she was beyond this point many years ago. Archbishop Cordeleone's predecessors should have dealt with this, but they chose not to. And while you and I know that while she's in D.C., she'll continue to receive the Eucharist by Cardinal Gregory, this move sent shockwaves through even the secular media, which reported on it to the point that I received Google's push notifications about it in the middle of the night. Seriously, the secular forces of the world want you to know about the story. Or rather, they want their diligent foot soldiers like that Jane group that's promising vengeance on the faith to know about it. 
But here's point two from the bishop, quote, it's consistent with Pope Francis, a talking point that will likely be pushed by those who disagree with Archbishop Cordelione's decision will be that it deviates from the pastoral example Pope Francis has recently set with regards to pro moloch Catholic politicians. For instance, we're likely to hear a lot in the coming days about how the Holy Father says he has never knowingly denied a pro moloch politician communion, or how he apparently told pro moloch American head of state that he is a good Catholic and should continue receiving communion, end quote. That's the National Catholic Register playing both sides of the story as much as they can play both sides of the story, because clearly she's in the wrong here. Francis has worked with some of the most reprehensible figures in the world who advocate for literally everything Queen Nancy does and more, that his good words on this topic are frankly empty. But, point three, quote, is repairing the scandal caused. One of the pastoral motives cited by Pachite Gregem Dei that Archbishop Cordelione says has guided his decision is repairing the scandal caused. And in his various correspondences, he makes clear that the grave problem of Queen Nancy's very public advocacy for the Moloch ritual is not only that it promotes such an evil practice, but that it sows confusion among the faithful and the wider public about just what the church teaches regarding this issue. In fact, the archbishop takes significant issue not only with the fact that she has become such a forceful advocate for the Moloch ritual, but that she has repeatedly referred to her Catholic faith as justification for doing so. For instance, in her May 4th comments to the Hill, she not only grounded her support for Moloch and her status as a quote-unquote devout Catholic, she also described Pope Francis and the church's teaching against Moloch as an appalling invasion of an issue of a personal nature, end quote. This is a pretty important reason why his predecessor or Benedict XVI or John Paul II should have taken care of this issue years ago. The archbishop told her to stop calling herself a good Catholic publicly. When she eventually makes a public statement, I doubt she'll comply with that. And to be clear here, by the way, some are talking about this as if she's been excommunicated. She has not been excommunicated. I guess what ha it, for that to happen is entirely up to her at this point, because her actions that come next will probably lead to that if she acts the way almost everybody expects. Now, point four is that this is a spiritual battle, and the Archbishop knows the atmosphere out there right now is not exactly friendly to the church in the secular world, and this will make things more difficult for Catholics. He's not wrong about that either. Quote, Archbishop Cordelione also urges his priests to promote the Archdiocese's consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and other spiritual practices like the daily rosary, fasting on Fridays, and spending an hour a week in adoration. What we are facing in this particular moment of history is a powerful reminder to us that the priesthood is not for the faint-hearted, he concludes in his letter to the priests. Of course, it never was. But for a long time, up until recently, we lived in a society that allowed us to imagine that it was. Let us not fool ourselves any longer. End quote. That, I think, is the best point that he makes in all of this. These are the methods by which we can cultivate the ground that makes converting the culture possible. Prayer, fasting, time in front of the Blessed Sacrament, and frequent use of the sacraments are our principal methods for fueling any future evangelization efforts of the culture and for weathering the present storm. The final point is that we don't know what the wider implications are, and it would be nice if this led to a domino effect among the bishops, with the worst of the bishops issuing similar statements for their fallen Catholics, like in New York or elsewhere in California, or even among the better ones in Oregon, even if it's just because of public pressure. Honestly, why hasn't Archbishop Sample, who's one of the better ones, done the same thing in Portland? If you're in Portland, send him a respectfully worded email or make a respectful call asking him to do his pastoral duty and follow the lead of Archbishop Cordelione by doing so with his local Moroccan representatives. And I only call him out because I used to live in Portland and I have a great respect for Archbishop Sample. But this is how you get a domino effect going with these kinds of things. And I'll leave you with this on Twitter. Father Dave Nix expressed frustration at the jubilance among some Catholics for the statement that was released. He described the situation as being that most modern Catholics are so hungry for a little Catholic orthodoxy that even something basic, like saying something as obvious as this issue being wrong and taking action that it should have been taken decades ago, gets adulation from Catholics. It's an indictment on us more than anything else, really, and I think there's a lot of truth in that statement. Father Dave Nix has a show on the channel Padre Peregrino where he mostly does traditional catechesis and discussion of issues within the church, framed in a catechetical light. Go check out his show. It's good stuff. And I think he's right. Yes, we should be happy that the archbishop finally acted, but we must ask ourselves a basic question. Why wasn't this done years ago? So what did you think about this? Are you jubilant or are you asking some of the same questions some of the rest of us are asking? 
But are we being too harsh or dismissive by not being thrilled or being just too cynical? Are other bishops likely to follow his and follow in his lead? Well, this may be, be the issue that causes the prophecy of Our Lady of Akita to finally be fulfilled. Bishops will oppose bishops and cardinals will be against cardinals. Let me know what you think of this in the comments, please. And uh, thanks to the patrons of the channel for supporting the work of this channel, because that's how I'm able to make videos on the spot like this, is with their support. So thanks to them for this. And uh, share and like and subscribe if you can. It really does help the work of this channel. Our hosts have uh, recently fiddled with the algorithm again, making it so that really the only way these things get out now, apparently, is if you share them. So great. <laughs> As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.